Givenchy is the name that comes to mind whenever you think of innovation, elegance, and all-time relevant designs in the world of estate couture worn by great fashion icons like Andre Hepburn, Jacqueline Kennedy, and the likes. And today, we're going to be learning about all that made him this great. Please, if you're yet to watch the previous episodes on fashion billionaires, exactly how they were made, kindly see the link in the description below and to watch because you definitely become who you admire and study via hard work. You're highly welcome to Cetra Craft Channel. Thank you for stopping by. I remain Chiquette Solo and etc. A serial entrepreneur majoring in fashion and I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa. Kindly grab a cup of coffee and let's go on this discourse. Hubert de Givenchy was born on the 20th of February 1927 in Beauville, Northern France. His father died when he was still small and so he was raised by his mother and grandmother. His grandfather brought great costumes, clothing, hairstyles, flag, and all kinds of interesting materials. And he said that was where he discovered his interest in muslins, embroideries, and laces from. He was always attracted by this species. So he would work hard, gain good grades, then tell his grandmom to grant him access to this beautiful fabrics and that heritage that he had the chance to see was actually the great influence that made him who he is today and is greatly rewarded for all that he learned there number one lesson make the best use of all opportunities that come your way because that might end up paying your bills in the future and taking you to the top of the ladder he had this opportunity of touching all the great fabrics, uh, embroideries, laces, hairstyles, costumes that his grandfather had. So he studied them and when he started his own fashion house later that we'll be hearing of, these were things that became the guidelines for his innovation. Yes. After studying hearts, he entered into the world of fashion at the age of 17 and worked as an apprentice with different French couturiers like Lucien Lennon and others. And in the year 1952, he opened the house of Givenchy where his innovation was greatly seen as he was using shirting a raw cotton similar to pattern paper to create his cheek and casual collections. He made floaty skirts and puffy blouses and he named this first collection Bettina Granzini. He made his collections from cheap fabrics but this fabrics always created curiosity in their designs those designs were elegant and they were really lovely another take home lesson learn to work with fabrics or whatever materials that are best understood by you don't think of what is in vogue as at this time dior was working with all his own kind of very heavy fabric, expensive fabrics and all that. But he was able to work with his own kind of fabrics. But the fabrics, when designed and the wears come, come out, the designs were really creating real curiosities. People wanted to know who made this. Look at how stunning these designs are. Yes. So... In 1953, he met Andrew Hepburn 
Andrew Hepburn was 24 at that time, and she was just starting a career in acting. They were about producing the movie Sabrina. So he went to Givenchy and said, can you please make my costumes for Sabrina? At first, Givenchy was not interested, but he said, please, I want to try you out. So he made the costumes and he said, they are perfect. This is just what we need for Sabrina. And that was how they started. It was a hit. When Sabrina came out, everything was okay. And before you know it, they moved to the next movie, Funny Face, and then to Breakfast at Tiffany's. And you will know that is well known for the black dress worn by Andrew Hepburn. And this has stood the test of the times in the world of fashion. Different decades have passed by, and this design is still timeless, it's still trendy because the, uh, it was elegant, it was simple, and it was accessible. He was the first person to make Esti Couture closer to every other woman in those days because then Esti Couture's were people that could only be afforded by the ruling class in France then. But by creating the spaces that were elegant and yet not made of too expensive fabrics and the likes, the women then that could not afford the normal estate couture will just go get the patterns and try to make out its designs on their normal single machines. Yes. And later on in the year 1957, it was the first I fashion designer to create a luxury ready-to-wear clothing line and he called it Givenchy Universite and the garments were produced in Paris using machines that were imported from the United States yes and that was a trend maker yes so to get to the top of this industry you have to think of doing things differently all the women at that time that saw Andrew Hepburn styles, they wanted to be like her. But with Givenchy's luxury ready-to-wear brand, those that could not afford the ready-to-wear, they simply went to get the patterns and made them out. So how are you making your designs accessible to those that love you? What are you thinking of doing differently that has not been done in the industry? This will actually make the way for you to the top. Yes. Okay, we continue. If you're enjoying this story, kindly give this video a thumbs up and let me hear about your story in the comment section. Yes. In that same year, 1953, he also met his idol in the person of Christabel Balenciaga. Balenciaga has been in the industry before Givenchy. And Givenchy looked up to him so much, then he became his mentor. Balenciaga took up Givenchy and started mentoring him, helping him. They were seen making different sketches and collections together. And in 1956, both Balenciaga and Abad de Givenchy presented their collection in New York. At that time, they make the sack dress a loose form without any waistline and it was really a success then he introduced a loose fitting but narrow hemmed dress called the sack or sack dress and it was also called the chemist dress which was also copied by christian dior for his 1957 spindle line or thereabouts and he worked with Balenciaga. You could see them creating different styles together, even from a particular fabric. They made different uh, styles for their collection, and it was great. And take home points. First, who is your mentor? To get to the top of whichever industry you have chosen to be, you need to have a mentor, someone that guides you. Someone would part your trading, would vision, would dreams resembles that of yours. It's not compulsory, it's 100%, but you're looking up to and you will even exceed such the limit of search. Someone that can correct you, that can put you through in whatever thing you're doing. 
So, Balenciaga was the mentor of Givenchy, and he was a great one, a great mentor. Yes, and there was no rivalry whatsoever. This is another take on point. They did things in common, they loved each other, helped each other. This is so important for upcoming designers, especially in this part of the world where I come from, Africa, Nigeria to be precise. There is nothing to die about, to compete about. We are to complement each other. You don't get help by bringing down the other. Rather, you get help by helping the others get help. So there, there should be no form of rivalry. I'm better than you. And you could even see Christian Dior copying the style of Givenchy. This has been the order in fashion. You'd get ideas and inspiration from other people, but you are not going to be a copycat. You're not going to make it 100% their own concept. You improvise, you innovate, you add new things to it, then you'll be good at it. So that is it on that point, yes. So later on, in the 60s, uh, Givenchy started different innovations. He was keeping up with the trend. When he saw that uh, there was the introduction of the shoulder, M lines, and every other thing, different designs from people like View Saint Lawrence, he started amending his designs to fit into the reigning designs then. What was in vogue? He created the balloon coat, he created the ball dress that was in 1958 or thereabouts. And he was always improving. He was never out of date. He was always up to date. As the trend keeps evolving, keeps moving forward, he was always changing his designs to go along with what is reigning. And that's one thing in fashion. Fashion is not static. It changes. Fashion moves as one fashion comes in vogue. So Givenchy was always on the top of his game. Whatever was reigning, he will adjust his designs to that. And that's why he has been regarded as the word, the innovative designer, whose designs are all all time relevant yes so think of this if you want to get to the top of his, the industry all the designs he made for andre airborne they are still very much relevant in the fashion world of today yes okay in 1969 he launched this fashion line for men and he called it gentleman Givenchy. and he started making it, expanding. He diversified his activities to create shoes, jewelries, ties, tableware, upholstery, kimono. And could you believe he was also chosen to design the interior of Houston hotels around the world. And he even designed a car. Lessons from this. You can't get to the top of it, the industry if you're just focused on one aspect of fashion. You have to diversify. He went going to shoes, jewelry, tableways, and I'll keep saying it. This is what we do at Cetra Fashion, myself and my husband. We do different things in fashion. Just like he went to the ties, we do ties, belts, shoes, uh, makeup, catering. We can cater for your event. Just call Cetro for the whole experience in fashion and we'll give that to you. Is it ready to wear line? Whatever. Yes. This is just learning from our predecessors how to be great. Yes. What have you taken home? You have to go into other aspects. To the point he was chosen to design the interior of Hilton hotels around the world. That's great. That's huge. And he made it. You know what that means yes so he went into a post go into different other sectors of the economy that can help you in the fashion industry and you never regret it i could just keep on talking about givenchy and we're not going to end today 
I really admire all he did in the world of fashion. And he was elected the personality of the year in 1979 and the most elegant man of the year by the best magazine. And in 1982, a retrospective presided by Andre Elburn was organized by the Fashion Institute of Technology of New York. He got so many other awards and in 1996 he was given the lifetime achievement award from the council of fashion designers of america so he kept on designing for years following the latest trend innovating creating new designs that were just okay for all ages later on he sold his business to the luxury conglomerate Louis Vuitton Moet Senesin in 1988, after which he designed for seven more years, retiring by presenting his final collection in 1995. And he's been a great designer of all ages because just a year to his death, a year or two years to his death, that was 2016, 2017, he was still found monitoring an exhibition production in honor of his great career lover partner andre elburn he produced his wardrobe the, the wardrobe of andre Hepburn was revisited redesigned uh, uh reproduced and he was there monitoring it just a year or two years before he died and at the age of 91 years on the 10th of March 2018, Herbert Dick Givenchy gave up the ghost. And to date, all that I left behind is still speaking in the fashion industry. So, what are you going to be remembered for? What are you bringing to the table in this industry or whatever industry you are in? What are you doing? What change are you effecting? How are you solving people's challenges? How are you being there? Good. Givenchy was so good to Andre. They worked together greatly and it was a success. He also designed for so many other icons then and great personalities of the time. And so many great people of these days are still wearing his clothes. So let me know where you are, what stage you are in, in this industry. How you intend climbing the ladder to the top? Let's have a discussion in the comment section. Till I come your way next time in the next episode. Catch you. Love you. Bye-bye. In the next episode, we're going to be considering Iman Ayesi.